Welcome to the Air Gun Show. This week we've got the PAO Topaz Mil Dot Swap Mark II scope from the shooting party on test. But first up, we're out hunting with Andy Watkins. Uh, Tom and me are out here today. We're on one of Tom's permissions now and the reason there's two of us is it's a bit of a two-man job. There's quite a lot of pigeons in these sheds. You have one shot and a lot of the pigeons fly off so ideally you want two people to simultaneously shoot and drop two at a time and that way you'll, we'll, we'll just hopefully double our bag. That's Yeah we've done it a few times before, uh, you'll have seen it on my own channel and works pretty well for us. Guns we're using, Tom's going to be using the Wolf of Rain. Um, 10 shot magazine, nice and short, ideal for these sorts of uh, shed shooting. On top he's got a 3 to 12 by 44 scope, sports match mounts, and I'll be using the Wolf of LGU. PAO SWAT on top, again sports match mounts, both these guns are in 177. Um, yeah. That's pretty much it. I think it's time we uh, headed into the shed and see if we can knock down some of these ferals. We can see them in there already. There's probably probably a good 30 or 40 in there. Um, there are quite a few crows behind us as well. I don't know if you can see that, but those crows behind us are, are pretty... Uh, well, there's a lot of them and Tom's jumped straight into action. There's a couple that's landed on the wire, so he's going to stalk around and have a shot on them. Um, and I think I'm going to follow him and see if we can get it on camera. But yeah, it's going to be a good day. I love it. This is one of my favourite shoots. This sort of farmyard pest control is essential, not just because of the expense of birds stealing animal feed, but also because of the disease risk they pose through fouling in water troughs and more or less everywhere else. It's a bit of an update then. Tom just stalked down here as I you know, seen me film and um, stalked in on a crow and shot it off the side of a building. Not quite sure whether I got the actual kill on camera. The angle was a little bit difficult for me to get. And then it dropped down in the field and uh, I knew he was dead because all the all the crows were, were kicking off. So we just uh, just went in to retrieve him. Quite a few in there, Tom. Just come in. There's uh, there's quite a few really close, so we're just gonna go for those ones first. Three, two. Well, that was two in the bag. Pretty sure we can get quite a few more. They haven't all flown off, so there's a, there's a chance for some repeaters here. So yeah, the reason we're shooting these birds is they're defecating all in the cattle feed and making a real mess. Um, so they're sitting on the girders and just pooing all in there. Um, so yeah, really not ideal. And a cow's trying to lick my camera. Yeah. So this is one of the many that we've shot today and as you can see this one was a heart and lung shot. I think this is one that was shot just on off the girder to the right hand side and just dropped down here landing in this concrete uh, walkway so 
nice bird in the bag. There's plenty more where that came from. There's quite a few getting trampled in there as well, so I'll best go and pick those now before they get too destroyed. Also, you'll have noticed that some of the shots didn't look like there was a, a particularly well thought out backstop. But in a lot of those cases, the position of the camera was different to the position of the gun. So the gun might have a good backstop, but it didn't look that way on the camera. Well, that's another one down. He just dropped in with a cow. There is another one up there. Uh, Tom, a load more coming in. Not anymore. The lads plow on with the cull picking their shots carefully to avoid causing damage to the barn roof. Well I've just popped out the shed now and we're having a couple. Um, I mean the, the guns are both performing really well. Tom's just had another one. Um, the problem is with the Springer I'm finding is just the reload time between each shot takes me two or three times as long as it takes Tom to reload so he's there waiting for me to to get ready um, but that's fine it's you know it's expected with, with a springer I just got another one as well um, so yeah that's pretty much the only issue I'm having um, if I was rabbit stalking might probably be more ideal less fast fire action um, but for this a little bit slow but it's still getting the job done right let's get back to some shooting Andy and Tom make a point of marking, picking and disposing of all the birds they shoot. Rotting corpses can pose as much of a disease risk as the live birds. Well Tom's just been asked to head over the other side of the farm with a shotgun, uh, see if he can knock over some wood pigeons that are, uh, are on some maize stubble. Uh, they've just fired up the tractor behind so it's a little bit noisier now. Well, I've taken this opportunity to uh, to grab the rain off him and see if I can knock a few pigeons down with it. There's definitely nowhere near as many as there was, but from sitting here and just waiting for them to circle around and come back into the sheds, I know that I'll probably be able to grab myself another couple. So, um, yeah, see if I can put this rain to good use. I'll have to reload the mic because uh, he's left me with an empty, but that's fine. Um, yeah, and then I'll just get straight on to shooting again. A fast follow-up shot into a wounded bird there, a vital element of responsible and humane pest control. More picking up duties for Tom. It's a grim job, but it has to be done. here it's a really good day the sheds are empty now there's still probably about 10 or 10 or 15 flying around but we might pick those up later on in the day so really happy with that both shot pretty well i think um, 
Yeah, thanks for having me, Tom. Thanks for coming. Andy Watkins bringing the pest to book there. And now it's the Air Gun Show News. This is the Air Gun Show News. All shooters are urged to stand behind the Great British Shooting Show. There's a petition going around calling for the NEC to cancel the show, which will take place once again in February. Basque has reported the petition for breaching a number of community guidelines, including intimidation and hate speech, and said everyone in the shooting world should rally to support the show. Don't forget that tomorrow is Black Friday, and many businesses in the gun trade will be launching discounts and offers. Ruag have already told us that there will be big discounts on Gecko Optics, while Scott Country will be unveiling deals on their range of night vision. And Sporting Rifle, Air Gun Shooter and Clay Shooting Magazine are set to launch 20% off deals too. Stay tuned to their social media feeds for all the details. Speaking of Egg and Shooter, the new issue is now on sale. It's the much-anticipated Gear of the Year issue, featuring no fewer than 65 of the very best products, from PCPs to pellets, springers to scopes, and knives to NV. Plus, there are guns on test from Virach and Brocock, pellets from QIS, and the chance to win a Webley Mark VI service revolver. Pick up Egg and Shooter in Good News Agents or subscribe now at myfavouritemagazines.co.uk. And finally, with voting open for the Great British Shooting Awards 2020, we take a look at one of the categories you can have your say in. This week it's the Night Vision or Thermal Product of the Year, and the nominees are the ATN X Sight 4K Pro, the ATN Mars Thermal, the Pulsar Accolade, the Pulsar Thermion XM50, and the Pulsar Thermion XP50. You can have your say in who wins. Head to greatbritishshootingawards.com to vote. That was the Egg and Show News. There's a real trend for compact scopes at the moment. And although the one I've got on the bench this week isn't exactly tiny, it is still very well suited to smaller guns. Plus, it's excellent value for money. It's the PAO Topaz Mil Dot Swat from The Shooting Party and it retails for £159.99. I've actually been using this scope for a few months now and it featured in our Autumn Woodland hunting package a few weeks ago. But it's such a versatile little optic that I thought we'd look at it in a little bit more detail. Now, it weighs 700 grams without any of the extras fitted and it measures a fairly compact 30 centimetres from end to end. Made from high quality aircraft grade aluminium, this scope feels very solidly built and it's shockproof so it should stand up to the recoil of a gas ram or spring powered air gun. It's nitrogen purged and waterproof and fog proof so it won't steam up. The lenses are multi-coated with a distinctive topaz colour which gives this scope its name. There's also a very nice sloping cowl which acts as a sunshade for the objective lens. This is the 3 to 12 by 44 IRPA model. Now the 44 mm objective lens and 30 mm tube make for surprisingly good light transmission and the 3 to 12 times zoom range is just about perfect for general air gun use, covering everything from close range ratting to long range precision work. The zoom dial is grooved for an improved grip, which is a big help when you're shooting with gloves on. Another nice feature is the push lock turrets, and again they feature good chunky dials. Lift them and they turn with positive clicks to make one quarter MOA adjustments for windage and elevation. Push them back down and they lock into position. They're even resettable so you can set the calibration on the dial back to zero after you've zeroed them in. The Topaz Swap Mark II features a half mil dot reticle. 
it comprises dots with intermediate markers to give you plenty of different aiming points to give shots hold over and hold under and to compensate for the effect of the wind. But it doesn't look too cluttered, which is a great asset for fast and precise shooting. The reticle can be illuminated for improved contrast against dark backgrounds. Turn the side dial and you can choose between red, green and blue illumination of the central element of the crosshair. You can even select between three different power levels for each colour. The fast focus ocular ring enables you to get the reticle pin sharp for your eye and the side parallax dial means you can keep it sharp over whatever range you're shooting over. It focuses right down to just 10 yards and then out to infinity. The scope even comes supplied with an oversized parallax wheel, which you can fit and mark up for more precise parallax adjustment and range finding. And the extras don't end there. This scope also comes supplied with flip-up lens covers and a set of two-piece mounts. Now, the mounts that come free with scope kits aren't always the best, but these ones are actually pretty good. This scope is even covered by a no quibble replacement lifetime warranty. When you think that it costs less than £160 and comes supplied with flip up lens covers, an oversized parallax wheel and a decent set of mounts, it really is great value for what is a pretty exceptional little scope. Look out for the new and improved Aegon Shooter magazine, packed full of technique, gear and insight from some of the best shooters in the industry. Brand new look and free video content. Pick up your copy today in stores or online. That's all for this week, but we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, have a look at their website and check out the benefits you could be taking advantage of through Airgun Membership.